Okay, so in this video I want to go over a couple of things that are useful for if you're going to use Substance Designer to build trims. Um, and I just wanted to look at a few different techniques. So this is by no means a tutorial on how to kind of use Designer and like make full trims and stuff, but I just wanted to go over some of the kind of more useful aspects which are which relate to doing this kind of hard surface work and kind of like organizing the different elements. Okay, so I've got this basic trim piece here, um, which is, if I just go into here, and just switch this off so we can see it, um, has a range of different parts which are, would tie out um, in, a, uh, in, a, in a linear way or in a, a horizontally like this. Um, and it's made up of a few different things. Uh, some of which you may recognize from bits that we've made before, kind of brought in. And um, they're basically all combined together. And then from all of those, I've managed to create a mask which will allow us to create an ID map. So if I go back to this, switch this bit back on, switch my base color back on, you can see that these are all being separated out by their base colors. So they're the kind of things we're going to look at. However, before we get to that, I want to go over how predominantly most of these things are made. So some of the tools that are used for that. Um, so I'm just going to open this little curves file and we'll start there. Okay, so the first thing is when I'm going to build things like this, I'm going to build, I'm using height is my main thing that I'm interested in. So to be able to do that, um, I like to set my scenes up a certain way. Now I always work with a base material and I set this base material up so that things like roughness and things are already controlled and then I can easily switch them on and off as I need them. So in the case of this I have a base colour which is a mid grey. Um, I have a material preset which is set to dielectric which basically means it's not a metal so I'm not working with metalness. Um, and I have a roughness value which is quite close to the top so it's not really demonstrating any shininess but I could easily go in and you know uh, change this if I needed to. Then I have a couple of user defined maps so by hitting true on normal and being inclusion and height I've exposed these input nodes. So what I've got here is I've got a blend node and the way I'm using this blend node is basically like a junction. So anything that I feed into this, so let's say I take a gradient, gradient, no, nope, it's got a gradient. So if I take a linear two gradient and I feed that into my background, then what this will do, if I just right click on this and just drag this onto here, then what you can see is the surface is getting bent around like this and it's feeding out to a normal map and an ambient occlusion node and also it's a height node so it's taking that as height specifically. So this is useful because essentially it will help me to describe the height, the ambient occlusion will help that and the normal will help that and the 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 we'll get the height out of it and I can just feed so as I do anything on this side of this if I just feed it into here it'll work. The blend node itself um, I've it's set to copy but I've got no opacity so the foreground's not actually doing anything so everything just feeds directly into the background um, and it just allows me to kind of build things up from here and be able to preview them really quickly. Um, the, 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 I, I've done this already, but the base, the, the benefit of the base material is I can just right click on, I can just right click and grab it and drag it on, um, and it will do everything. And then when I'm ready, um, I can just right click on this and go create output nodes, and it will create all the nodes that I need um, to output uh, to save the file. So I don't need to worry about clicking on any of these things. I mean, I, I don't need to kind of like click on a normal map or anything like that in here, because I could just do this in here. I can just click on the normal here and it'll preview it. So it's it's really handy to use the base material like that. And it allows you to like switch on. So if I didn't want to see uh, the height map from here, or say the ambient occlusion from here, then I could just go into it and I could just switch it off, switch it to false, 
and then it wouldn't be it wouldn't be displaying that node anymore on here um, but it would still be connected so it's handy anyway so that's that part set up so the main thing we're going to do to build a lot of these type of things you know these things with gradient these um these these lathed sections that kind of like that tile in this direction uh, we're going to use a gradient to do that and then we're going to remap it with a curve uh, so the way we do that is we create a gradient so in this case I'm not going to use this one I'm going to create a uh, gradient linear one because it's basically going from black through to white uh, so I can connect that up you can see what that's actually doing and as you can see that's basically giving us a uh, a step up like that yeah so that's kind of useful so what then we want to do is we want to remap where that lives so let's go to gradient, uh, gradient map and then how we're going to use our gradient map is we're going to uh, control let's get rid of him where the gradient starts to happen so it's black all the way up to here and then it's white at the end and if we see that as a, a gradient I need to set it to grayscale so that it'll actually preview it then you can see that it's flat all the way black and then the gradient starts to go up so this is going to be the area that we're going to basically build our trim into so to stop this being a linear gradient like that just going from there to there we want to put a curve in it to remap it so if I right click on here oh, sorry if I hit space and go and curve then what I can do is, so this is basically going from black through to white like this, is I can actually start to place nodes or controllers, control points in here. And it will start to remap that gradient here and you'll start to see it in here. even map that back down a bit and then these we can straighten them out if I need to if I wanted to make a sharp transition like that widen them out thin them down whatever we need to do but essentially what you can do is you can create cornice work you can do all sorts of stuff just by doing that and then that's mapped into that space so that is something that for this type of work you'll use quite a lot the other way you can use it is if you wanted to do something like this trim here this pipe work you could uh, do this really easily and um, by multiplying two gradients together and mapping this across this so if you go to curves so if we want to do something like that then um, I'll just start this from scratch let's uh, load a gradient 2 in I'm going to change its tiling mode to absolute start the tiling on it and then I'm only going to let it tile horizontally so that's when we get our pipe going along that way and the more I tile it the smaller it gets I'm then going to make a duplicate of that, a copy of it, and this one I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees and I'm going to make it so it does vertical tiling instead. And the idea being that we would blend those two things together. So this one is going to be this kind of thing here. Uh, so what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to uh, So I remap the curve, and because this has got it's it goes to white and then goes back out to black, then this will mirror. So if I make it flat like this and start to bend it, you'll start to see this drop off here. I feed this into here so we can see it. Make sure I've got this on here. You can see the effect of that. Get 
something like this. It's quite interesting. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to blend these two together. So blend this the background, this the foreground. Multiply. And then push the opacity of that right down, something quite low. So you have something like that. And then because this is darker on the edges and this is a lot lighter, a little bit like that. And what I can do is I can add a levels node here. Pull that black in. What it'll do is it'll start to create a, this effect. So lumpy, um, and I can go back in here and I can push the tile in that a bit more to make it smaller. But essentially we end up with a collar over the top of that like that. And this is just by basically building a couple of gradients. I could then go with this if I wanted to, you know, make it a bit more interesting. I could, or repeat a bit more, I could add a transform node. Uh, change the width down to 50% so we know that it's going to tile more that way. Um, 50% to get the scale the same either way. And obviously, the height of that now is a bit silly in comparison to other things. So, if we're happy with the height as it is, then what we would need to do on top of that is probably just pull another levels in over the top. Do that. Okay, select levels. Yeah, and bring it back into range. Or if we want to keep the, the black level down, bring it back into range that way. So that we can so it's easier to blend it with things, that's probably better. And there we go. So the second part to this is we want to add colour to this part and not any other part. Uh, so the way we would do that is, uh, well one of the ways you could do that is we could just take this part, we could take another levels node off here. So do that. Push this back. So it's pretty much flat like that. And then feed that into um, we're going to create a uniform colour. Want two of those, so I'm going to make another one. And I'm going to feed both of those and zoom in on this more a bit. So, okay. so basically, I'm going to use this as an alpha and I'm going to blend between two colours. The bottom colour is going to be black and the top colour is going to be whatever we choose it to be. So, say yellow, and then I'm going to create a blend here. And this just works like a lerp then that you would have in. Uh, in Unreal. Uh, yeah, as simple as that really. So this yellow will then be, uh, this will, we well in the case of this one I've just fed it into the base colour so we can see it, um, but you would use this as a material ID in something like Substance Painter and then you could use that to mask it out. Uh, so if I do that in here I'll just basically set base colour to be true, so I've now got a thing for base colour and then I can feed it into there. And there you go. Um, if we want to have that, if we want to move that, we can, you know, so that it's going to be at the top of our uh, sheet, we can just use the transform node and we can just place it where we want, where we need it. And that would be the start of our trim. And then what we could do is we could start to pull in. Uh, start building the rest of those parts and then blend start blending them together uh, so that's the first part 